Okay, this is lecture four, uh, part two, example two. Okay, so this one um, is just talking about two-dimensional velocity um, and acceleration vectors. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So a wheeled robot is programmed to follow um, the following two-dimensional position functions while navigating a smooth flat surface. Um, so it's entirely in the x and y plane. Um, and I point out here that the units are centimeters. Okay, um, so at t equals three seconds, we're asked what is the robot's position vector? What is the angle between this vector? Uh, what angle does this vector make with the negative y axis, excuse me, right? And the negative y axis is shown right here, right? And that's it. And um, yeah, that's that's part A. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this. All right, so we just want to know where it's located so we can just find a coordinate at um, three seconds. So x at three seconds is going to be negative 0.41, okay, times three seconds squared, okay. Okay, so. All right, so 0 0.41 times um, three seconds. It's cubed, not squared. 13 times three seconds plus 1.6. Okay, so what do I get for that? So then we got, all right, so let's go over here. All right, so negative um, 0 0.41 times um, 3, and then we want squared or cubed, okay, and um, plus. times 3 as well, and this time it's linear. All right, so it's times 3, and then plus 1.6. All right. Okay, so everything look reasonable here. All right, so 13, I think it's growing large, okay. So 1,000, negative 1,000. Um, oh, nope, I need a 0 0.41. All right, so that's why it's, that was too large. Let's just fix that. Okay. All right, 29.53. That's x. 29.5, same thing for y. All right, for y, negative 0 0.67 times 3 seconds cubed minus 2.1 times 3 seconds squared minus 32 times 3 seconds. Okay. All right. And that should be 10 equals. Okay. So what do we get for that? Okay. So I've entered it in the calculator here. All right. I get negative 132 meters. And I should have added the units to the position as well. All right, so that's going to give us a basically our coordinate, right? And we are actually moving on this graph. I've, I've just graphed it here, okay, by plugging into an online graphing calculator. So, okay, so we're at about 30, so we can kind of draw some dotted lines over here. Okay, and that should line us up with 132, so something like right there. All right, so that's basically our position at t equals 3 seconds. Notice that this is going from 0 to 5. So that's what we're actually looking at here, um, included in the, in the problem. All right, so then we've got a position vector now, which I'll draw in. Okay, so we're going to draw it from the origin, because that's it's relative to the origin. Okay, so that vector right there is, in fact, r. Okay, that is our displacement vector. Okay. So we're asked then, what angle does this vector make 
with the negative y-axis. So the angle that they're asking for is this one right here, which is theta. Okay. All right. Well, we've got um, two components of this position vector. We've got the x and y components, and we can use those to think about how to find theta just using a right triangle. Okay, so this right here will be our y component. Okay, and then this one is our x component. So what I mean by that simply is that this is our sub x, and then this one over here is our sub y. Okay, so then if we want to use tangent to find theta, we have that tangent of theta, okay, so tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that would be rx over ry. Right here I'm running their magnitudes because that's what I care about. And so then if I actually want theta, it's going to be tangent inverse of those two components. And the um, so the components that we care about um, are going to be, and actually sh I should clean up and write the, the vector in some, some cleaner notation, but for now we're just going to go ahead and use the components. So it's going to be, so Rx, well that's 29.5, all right, and then we're dividing by the 132, um, 132, it's magnitude, okay, all right, and that will give us our angle right here, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go over my graph here, or my calculator, and do inverse tangent. And I want to do it with this value here, divided by um, this one, except I don't want the negative. Okay. All right. So then go ahead and see what we get. All right. So we get an angle. Um, I just believe this is in radians. So let's. See if we can't get it in degrees. Okay. All right, 12.5 degrees. So theta is 12.5 degrees. Okay, looks good. So what um, our other thing we'd actually want to write then is if we wanted to write r as a vector, it would just be clear to write it as 29.5 i hat plus um, or minus really 132. I could have plus the minus of j hat, right? Two dimensional vector. There we go. All right. So that's our information there. That's what they asked for in part A. Okay. So for B at t equals three seconds, what is the robot's um, velocity vector? And what angle does the velocity me vector make with the position vector? Okay, um, so th same time, but then we actually want to find the the velocity. Okay, well to do that, so we have to. So the first step to find the velocity at a particular time is to find the velocity in x and y. Okay, so v x as a function of t, the velocity um, function in x, is just going to be d x dt, okay, and we can clearly show that it was the position that was the function of time, okay, and so that's going to look like negative times, or negative 3 times 0 0.41 t squared plus 13, and that's it, okay, so negative 3 times 0 0.41, so just 3 times 0 0.41, Okay, that gives us 1.23, so negative 1.23 t squared plus 13. Okay, so that's our velocity function. Notice here that um, I'm not being so close, so careful with the coefficients as in the other uh, video example from this lecture. Um, just, just different, slightly different notation, just different, different focuses. Okay. Um, so in other words, I just write negative 1.23, and I'm not, I don't clearly state what the what the units are. Uh, but or we want a velocity, so we know the whole thing. It's in meters per second. Okay. Um, and, you know, I guess we could have made that clear up here as well. I'm going to put some brackets around this in our final answer and put meters. Um, oh, centimeters, in fact. Okay. Okay. 
So getting back to the velocity, so we got one of them. Let's do the same thing with y as a function of time. dy dt. Okay. So that's going to give us negative 3 times 0 0.67 t squared minus 2 times 2.1 t. Okay. And then minus 32. Clean that up a bit. So here we'll do 3 times 0.67. That gives us 2.01. So we have negative 2.01 t squared minus 4.2, which is this 2 times 2.1, t minus 32. Okay. All right, so those are our two velocity functions, and x and y respectively. Um, so if then we just want to find what is the velocity function then at 3, so then v at t equals 3 seconds is just going to be vx at t equals 3 seconds, i hat, plus vy, t equals 3 seconds, j hat. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in what we get, clean that up. Okay, so I just wrote out the expression here for um, velocity, um, and I resized things so we could see um, what we're looking at more clearly here. Um, so we're here we are with our velocity function, okay? Uh, really, actually, that's our velocity vector. Um, there was a function before we plugged in three seconds. Um, so we can see that the velocity vector points um, basically straight down because its its j component is much, much larger than its y component, basically the difference between 2 and 62, um, or 63. And, and yeah, and it's much, much longer. So it's primarily just a negative y um, pointing vector. So if we draw that here, Okay, so at three seconds, um, and of course, drawing it to scale on this x and y axis doesn't quite make sense because you know this is this is all in centimeters over here. This one's also in centimeters, um, so you know it's we can try and choose what scale we want. But I will just draw it like so. Basically, just have it pointing straight down, and then this is the velocity vector. Okay, so this is v. Okay, now that's just a velocity vector, right? Obviously, the velocity vector is going to be constantly changing, but at this point in time, it points straight down. But of course, it points straight down because the velocity vector must be tangent to the trajectory at that point in time, right? Well, the point in time we're at is at three seconds. This is our location because, again, this graph is x and y, right? x and y. So this is actually the particle moving through space, the quote-unquote robot. And so at this point, right, our little, our little green dot here is pretty close to being moving directly in the negative direction which is why we've got primarily a negative you know, y-pointing velocity vector. Okay. All right, so then we just want the angle between the velocity vector and the position, the position vector. So as far as an angle between them, so really what, we're, what they're talking about is I'm going to copy the velocity vector and place it at the origin just as the position vector is. So right there, okay? And actually before I do that, I'm going to clean up something so we can see it and not have to put it over the angle. Okay, so I'm just going to place that back. Okay, so there's the velocity vector. So we can actually see them both with their tips um, touching the same place, or rather the tails touch touching the same, uh, both at the origin. Okay, and then I'll clearly show that this was the first. So the first a um, thing we talked about was theta. Okay. Because that was the um, that was the angle that the position vector made with the um, the negative y-axis. Well, since the um, the velocity vector is almost parallel to the negative y-axis, we would we certainly should expect that we should get about the same same angle, about 12.5 degrees again between the velocity vector and the position vector. But to actually do that, right? So we, you know, yeah, if we wanted to round it, we could say, yeah, well, it's about 12.5. Uh, but we can use the dot product to write that more formally. So then we've got that v dotted with r, so dot product with r is, and basically anytime you see that multiplication symbol, the dot pro the dot between vectors, you know it's the dot product, the scalar product, it outputs a scalar. If you see that dot placed between scalars, then it's just multiplication. Okay. Now sometimes I'll use the you know the cross, especially for scientific notation, but more often I will use a dot. But I'll try to clearly, you know make that not look like a decimal. Okay, 
So, and that's just going to be V, R, and then cosine of theta. Okay. Um, absolutely. Okay. That, that, that's that what we want. So then we just want to find theta. So then theta is going to be cosine inverse of V dot R over the multiplication of their magnitudes. Okay, so you can, you know, a little bit of work actually, right? But find something that is going to be pretty, pretty close to 12.5, but it's good, good practice. So cosine inverse. Okay, so what does the dot product look like? Well, it's just going to be Vx Rx plus Vy Ry, and then that is all going to be divided by the multiplication of their magnitudes. Okay, which here would just be V x squared plus v y squared. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by the same thing, just about for position, which will just be r x squared plus r y squared. Close that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate that, and I'll show it to you. All right, so you can see I went through and calculated this all out. All right, just plugging all our numbers in where they needed to be, all right, for v sub x and r sub x, v sub y and r sub y, the ma the whole magnitude of the velocity vector by just, you know, taking the square root of the square of its components. Same thing for the, the position vector. All right, and so then these are actually the numbers I get in the denominator and the numerator. So let's just fi let's finally do cosine inverse. All right. So cosine inverse of eight thirty three or eight thousand three hundred thirty three. Okay, divided by eight four eight five. I did a little bit intermediate rounding here. Um, something in the world. Okay. All right. 10.9 degrees. Okay. Excellent. So now, sure enough, pretty close to 12, just as, just as we'd expect. Okay. So that was part B. Let's see what we want to do for the final part. At t equals 3 second, what is the robot's acceleration vector? Okay. And we're not asked for the angle between it and anything else, um, you know. But we can certainly go ahead and calculate that. So for part C, we want the acceleration vector at t equals 3 seconds, which is then just going to be the, the x component of the acceleration vector at t equals 3 times i hat plus the y component of acceleration at t equals 3 times j hat, just to make a vector out of it. And we know that we're just going to be taking the derivatives. Okay. So then this is, would just be d of vx dt at t equals 3 um, plus, that would be i hat, plus d of vy t equals 3 dt j hat. Okay, I'm just going to make this more clear that this is all, okay, just a fraction. Okay, cool. Let's work that out. Okay, um, so I probably want to kind of see what the what they look like, the the x and y, right? And so I'm just going to quickly do that before I rush ahead too much. So a sub x, just as um, in general as a function, is going to be the derivative of the um, velocity, um, the x component of the velocity, which was up here. It was the um, 1.23 t squared and so on. Okay. So we'll just take its derivative. So that's going to be negative 2 times 1.23, okay, times t. And that's just going to be, so negative 2, or just 2, times uh, 1.23, okay, 2.46, negative 2.46, 6 times time. So it's linear, linear acceleration. 
um, that makes sense because our um, you know at both our both our position functions and our both the components of position x and y were both um, third order, so the acceleration should be uh, linear. Actually, like the pre the example that you saw in this um, same lecture, okay, the previous example in the same lecture, okay. And so then a sub y, what's that? Okay, um, that's just going to be negative two um, times two point zero one. I just pulled the two in the front or the negative in the front times t minus four point two, okay. And so that's just going to become negative 4.02 t minus 4.2. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we can just plug in t equals 3 for both of those and see what we actually get. So then the acceleration vector at t equals 3 seconds is going to be negative 2.46 times 3 i hat. Okay. And then plus. Ne um, negative 4.02 times 3 minus 4.2, okay, j hat. Excellent, okay. Um, what does that give us? Well, 2.46, let's put it over here. So 2.46 times um, 3 is 7.38, so we have negative 7.38 i hat and then the j hat component of the acceleration vector at three seconds is so negative 4.02 times times 3 uh, minus 4.2 okay uh, negative 16.3 Okay, so negative 16.3 j hat. Okay, that is our vector. Absolutely. Okay, so it definitely points more down um, than it points um, uh, in, or rather, um, more down than to the side. Um, and notice they're both negative. So actually, we definitely, I definitely want to show that up above. So I want to show the acceleration vector as our final thing here. I mean, this is the, this is our answer, right? We put a box around it. That's what they asked for. Um, but in order to help explain this, I want to show it. Okay, so, well, you know, let's think about it, right? So kind of, if we just, you know, we can kind of think about this angle, but, you know, again, we weren't asked for it, but it points about twice as much in um, the y direction as it does in the x direction. So if we were to think of the components of the acceleration vector, it'd be basically, you know, twice as long this way, or make it like this, so twice as long as it is tall. So then we could say that the acceleration vector points Let's make a thicker line so you can see it. The acceleration vector points basically right about there. Okay, so that is the acceleration vector. All right, it's um that's yeah, and that's at three seconds, but it points inwards on the curve, and it always will, because the acceleration vector mathematically is equivalent to curvature. And here we have this this confirmation that for this particular object moving in x and y space, that its instantaneous acceleration vector indeed points inwards on the curve. It doesn't point exactly towards the center of the curve because this object is not moving at constant speed while turning. It's both turning and changing its speed. Okay, and we'll that's an idea we'll keep coming back to. All right, thank you very much.